9.8 transverses and angles. Actually, this is day one. I'm going to split this into two sections. The first one is kind of a lot of vocabulary words in here. Now, hopefully, you're familiar with the first ones that we go over. But um, the first one, parallel lines, those are two lines that never meet. So you'll have two lines, and they're in perfectly spaced distance apart where they would go on forever and ever. They'd never cross, meet, or touch. Then you have a transversal. That is a line that passes through two other lines. In this image here, the red line, labeled T, that is your transversal. And that crosses two other lines. So that's called your transversal. In this case, I know that line A and B are parallel because it tells me A is parallel to B. That's not an 11, that's the sign for parallel. Also, I know by the little triangles here on the lines, that indicates that those two lines are parallel. So that transversal goes through parallel lines A and B. Another vocab you have a straight angle is an angle that measures 180 degrees. It's in a straight line. Well, right here, here's a straight line, also known as a straight angle, because the whole width here is 180. For example, if I have a circle, halfway across this circle, half of a circle is what? How many degrees? How many in a whole circle? You have 360 degrees. Hopefully you're not a crazy driver and you do what's called cookies or whatever and do 360s where you do complete spin arounds, all right? That would be a 360. Or say you're walking to lunch one day and then, oh man, I forgot my, I forgot my can of Mountain Dew in the locker. So you quick turn around and head back this way. What do you do? 180. You do a 180. So this flat line equals 180, this side is 180, all together it's 360. Complementary angles. Two measures are two angles, can't be three, can't be four, only two. Two angles whose measure adds up to the sum of what? Everybody seems to remember this one. Two complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So here, if I add angle 1, plus angle 2, what do they have to equal? They have to equal 90 degrees. Give me some examples. So if this one was 20, whoops, if this one was 20, darn it, <laughs> 27 degrees, what would this one have to be? Sixty-three. We agree? What do they add up together? They added them up together, 63 and 27. 90 degrees, so those would be complementary. What would be the complementary angle to 83? What's the complementary angle to 83? Seven. All right, because they have to equal exactly 90. Okay. Are these complementary? Because 40 plus 50 is 90, so they are complementary. Then you have the supplementary angles, where two angles added together don't equal 90. They're supersized, they're supplementary, so they now equal 180. So here's your straight angle. We always know that a straight angle equals what? This flat line. This whole thing has to equal 180. So if this one's 125, what's this one going to be? How do I figure that out? 180 subtract 125. Good. So what is 180 minus 125? So I know this one is 55 degrees because the two of them have to equal 180. So these two angles are what? 
supplementary. And they make a, what kind of angle? A straight angle. So what kind of angles are those? 120 and 60. What do they equal? 180. So are they complementary or supplementary? Supplementary. They are supplementary. How about if I have the angles 45 and 47? What would those angles be to each other? What do I get when I add them together? I get 92 degrees. So does that make them complementary or supplementary? Neither. They are neither. They have to be exactly 90 degrees to be complementary or exactly 180 to be supplementary. So these would be neither. And then vertical angles. How many remember those from last year? Vertical. Vertical angles. When two lines intersect, four angles are created. All right, so it looks like this was the intersecting line. Is that a transversal, this red line? Can we call that a transversal? No, why not? Because it only intersects how many lines? How many does it have to intersect? At least two. All right, so that is not a transversal. That's just an intersecting line. Vertical angles are opposite each other. So looking at these, what two angles can you give me that are opposite each other? One and four? One and two? One and three? What do you want to go with? Opposite of each other. Three and two. Three and two? One and four. They are reflections of each other, and they are a 180 rotation. Oh, that gives away. Which one's a 180 rotation? If I say one, Angle 1 is, what does this sign mean? Congruent to angle what then? 1 and 4. 180 rotation. It's a reflection of each other. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. So if this one's 27 degrees, what's this one? 27. That one's going to be 27 degrees also. So also, what's the other set of vertical angles then? Yep. Doesn't matter if I put three and two or two and three. Nope, either one. So those are what kind of angles? Two and three are what kind of angles? Two and three are what kind of angles? Vertical. They are vertical angles. One and four are vertical angles. Do I know what the measure now of Three and two would be, since these are 27, what would two and three be? How do I figure that out? Look at that, I have a straight angle. 153. Does 153 and 27 make a straight angle? Yep. So what would this one be then? 153 also. So these two vertical angles are 153, these two are both 27. All right, now we look here. If measure of angle 2 is 120 degrees, kind of like what we just went over, I can figure out what all the other angles are. On your boards, hold up what the measure of angle 3 is. So the majority said that the angle 3 is what? 120 degrees. Exactly, because what are these two angles? They are <coughs> vertical. vertical angles. So does that mean 1 and 4 are 120 degrees also? No. no. Yes. I know 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are 120 degrees. Now we need to find angles 1 and 4. So hold up on your board what you think angles 1 and 4 equal. Okay, for those that were still stumped, what do we need to do? We know these two are 120. Here's a straight angle. So I know these two angles are supplementary, so they have to be 180 together. So what's 180 minus 120? 
60. And I know that 4 has to be 60 degrees also because these two are what kind of angles? Vertical. What kind of angles are 2 and 4? Um, 2 and 4 are what? Yes, they're supplementary. 3 and 4 are supplementary. What else are supplementary on that? 3 and 1. And two. Those are all supplementary. Okay, now we have corresponding angles. Corresponding, basically, what a corresponding angle is, is a translation. So if I were to take, here's my parallel lines right here, here's my transversal. So if I take this set of numbers, and I slide it down on top of this set of numbers, slide it down the transversal, say do a translation down, what number would one match up with down here? Five. You took this and slid it down, it would match up with one is congruent to five. What is two congruent to? One is congruent to five, two would slide down and line up with <coughs> Six. What would five? Oops, my bad. What would seven? Three. Yep, seven and three are congruent. And then what's the last <coughs> set of corresponding? Four and eight. Nicely done. All right, give me a pair of corresponding angles here, please. One and three, you're saying. So now you're going this way, like that? I agree. Because you would slide this set, slide it along the transversal, or slide this set this way, doesn't matter. Slide them on top of each other, do that translation. One matches up with three. Another set, please. Two and four. Two and four, everybody agree? Good, another set. Five and seven, and the last set. Six and eight. Six and eight. Five and seven, six and eight. So do you notice on this, you have your two parallel lines. Did you notice that you have numbers on the inside here? What's another name for inside? Interior. <coughs> Interior. And then do you notice we have numbers on the outside of those parallel lines? Exterior. These are interior angles. The ones on the outside are exterior angles. That takes us to the next vocab. Alternate interior angles. They are opposite sides of the transversal and is between the two parallel lines. Following transformation. First, a reflection or a 180 degree rotation. Second, a translation. Match them up and prove they are congruent. We need to prove that they are congruent. So it tells us the lines M and M, M and N, I'm thinking chocolate, M and N are parallel. There's a parallel sign. So, huh, what do we do first? There are two pairs of alternate interior. So first of all, we know we're working with the interior. Where are my interior angles on this picture, on this graph? Um, three, Name them. Five and six. Three, four, five, and six are my interior. They're inside my parallel lines. All right, so there's my interior. Now I need to list the two sets. Is it going to be three and four, three and six, or three and five? Alternate interior, and remember up here it said opposite sides of the transversal. Between three and four and five and six. No, it would be four and five. A reflection and a 180 degree <coughs> rotation. Alternate, rotate. So what are going to be my going to be three and six and four and five. So angles three and six are congruent and four and five are congruent. And these are what kind of angles? Alternate interior angles. Everybody say that. Alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. Hey, not bad at all. Okay, so please on your whiteboards pull up the two sets of alternate interior angles on that graph. 
<laughs> all right, good. So your alternate interior, here's your interior. Here's the inside of the parallel lines. Now my alternate interior, right there. <laughs> Two and seven are congruent. We just proved that. And three and six. Those are your two sets of alternate interior angles. So now let's go to alternate exterior. Same rules apply. The first is a reflection or a 180 rotation and then a translation. So if you look at this, we know they're parallel. Here's our translation or our transverse, sorry, transversal line. Now, but we want to go exterior, alternate exterior. So we don't want to go to the inside now. Now we want to look at the numbers outside of our parallel lines. And it's alternate, so do your crisscross. What are you going to get? Hold up the two pairs of alternate exterior, please. Okay, so for your exterior, they're out here. And we want alternating exterior, this one and this one. So one and eight are congruent. And then the final one is two and seven. The two and the seven are congruent. One last one for today. Hold up both pairs, alternate exterior. When you get the right answer, I'll hand out your packet. You can do page one and two for today. Okay, so the final alternate exterior angles on the outsides were what? One and eight, and what was the last set? Five and four, four and five, doesn't matter which order. What does this sign stand for again? Congruent. What does this sign stand for? Similar. What does this sign equal? Approximately. All right, just a little quick tidbits at the end. Homework pages one and two in the packet.